Now that we've learned about the concepts of input and output, let's see how they're actually applied in Python. Today's an exciting day for us because just as we had this big leap forward when we figured out how to take input from the user via the terminal and print back to the terminal, we're having an equally big step forward today learning about ways beyond just the terminal to take input and get output. In particular, you can see here, uh, the way we're going to learn today is looking at text files. So as I said, so far, everything's been terminal in, terminal out. And honestly, that's worked OK for us one off. But definitely, if you gave this to your parents or to most people, they wouldn't know how to use it. Um, because in general, the terminal is really just for us developers to use. So our step forward today, whoops, our step forward today will be uh, learning how to take input from the text file and give output to a text file so the user doesn't have to type something each time the program runs. This is really handy, maybe handier than you think, because uh, you can, you know, so far, the only input that we've been able to provide is something that we can type. We've been able to type a name, type some numbers, average some numbers. Um, I think you have to do that on your exam. Sum up numbers one by one and average them. Uh, but we haven't been able to do anything taking a very large input. Like, for example, you might want to process all of the words in your favorite book and figure something else about them. Like, uh, what's the most frequent word in your favorite book? That would take way too long to type in one word at a time. So instead, you can have your program, your code, read directly from a text file and take those strings, the string of the text in your book, as input to your code. How do we do that? Well, this is the canonical way to read a file, this block of code here. Let me break it down because there's a couple of new pieces here. So the first new piece you might notice is the open function. This open function here uh, takes two arguments. The first is the file name, the path and file name for the file that you want to read from. I'll point out here and highlight that this is relative to where your code is by default, or it could be an absolute path. If you don't know what relative or absolute means, don't worry about it. But the takeaway for you, and as we'll see slightly later when I demo these functions, is you'll want to make sure that the code that you write is in the same directory. Uh, the input that you're reading in the code that you write is in the same directory as the code that you're writing. Um, or if it's in a deeper directory, so if you have some folder with different books and the books text files are in there, you'll want to make sure that that path, that relative path, is specified. The second argument you see here is the letter R. This second argument is the writing mode. Um, and there's a number of different possible values, but the important ones for you to know are R, which stands for read, and W, which stands for write. You might be wondering, hey, what does this really mean? You know, what does this map to? Think of it as when you open a Google Doc or a, a Word document, sometimes it opens in read-only mode, right? And then you can't really make changes to it. It's the same thing here. If you open something with R, then you can only read to it. And if you open something with W, you can only write to it. Uh, and the idea being that with this R mode, you protect someone from accidentally overwriting the stuff in the file. And with this W mode, you protect people from reading the contents of the file if they're only supposed to be able to write to it. Now, then we have this while and as if. What do these do? Why are they here? Open maybe might make sense, but why are these here? This is actually because reading files is kind of expensive. Um, you know, think about it. Think about how hard your computer has to work when you pull up a, a uh, Microsoft Word document um, or on Google Drive when you open up a lot of documents. Whenever you're working with a text document, you have to take that whole document and kind of pull it out of your filing cabinet and lay it out on a table. And that process of taking it out of the cabinet and laying it out on the table or keeping it in your memory is pretty expensive. 
And so this with statement, with open as f, all it does is it assigns this file to the variable f. And then uh, you can use it for the duration of the block. But as soon as this block of code inside is done, it will handle closing the file. You'll learn about what it means to open or close a file in later CS classes. But conceptually, you can think of it as putting the file back into the filing cabinet. So you don't have to worry about it being on your mind anymore. You don't have to worry about it being on a table. Uh, you know, speaking with a real life example, you don't have to worry about spilling coffee on an important document once you put it away. Uh, and it's important that we do this in all the code that we write. You won't see this with open as f. You won't see this with as construction very often. In fact, in this class, you won't see it at all except for opening a file. So just associate it for now with reading a file with open as f colon. I'll point out here, this with block, with statement and its corresponding block is just like conditionals or loops. So in the sense that every the, this inside of the block, the block itself, uh, it doesn't get its own scope. Remember how in functions, when we created a function and executed that function, every time we would execute the function, we'd have a new frame created. And we'd write in that frame uh, variables that are created. And that frame would be discarded after you're done executing the function. This here is just a regular, just a statement, just like uh, if or while. And so it doesn't get any of its own scope, which is nice for us because that means any variables you create inside of this with block will be accessible after the block is over. The only exception being this if, uh, the, this f, um, or whatever variable name you decide to give it, you will still be able to reference it. It still exists, but the file is closed, and so you won't be able to read from it or write to it after this block is done. If you do, it'll cause an error. Finally, we have the block that I've been mentioning. So again, we call this a block because after this colon, these are all the lines that are indented. Uh, so in this block, you write code that uses the given file f, uh, the created file f, and you will uh, iterate through that file. So the way you do that, the simplest way is for line in f. The file is a collection of lines. Think about it. It's like when you're typing your, your essay, every time you hit enter, it goes to a new line. So that's exactly how a file is represented. It's a series of new lines. So we do for line in f, we're able to use this for name in variable uh, sequence. Uh, we're able to use this same construction to iterate over our file because this f is a sequence of lines. Our file is a sequence of lines. And inside of this for loop, you can use line however you want. You can do whatever you want with it. We'll see some examples of me doing this in just a bit. I'll show you two other ways to do, uh, two other handy ways to do file input output. Uh, there's this f.readlines function, which is handy because sometimes you don't want to immediately do something with each line. You want to first read them all in and then do something after. And so f.readlines returns a list of all of the lines. Note that all of these lines, both up here when we did for line and f, but also all of the uh, elements of this f.readlines have the, tr uh, the new, li uh, new line character at the very end. So lines in Python, uh, in files, we can tell what is a line uh, based on new line characters. So we have a line, keep going, a new line ends right after, uh, a line ends right after a new line character. And so these new line characters are included in the lines that are read into the, read in from the file. And so you'll find if you look at the individual values inside of this list, that they're all strings that have a new line at the very end, new line character. And the other handy way that I'll show you here is f.read, which will read the whole file into a single string all concatenated together. So up here, f.readlines returns uh, a list of strings that have new lines at the end that all together combined would make up the whole file. f.read just returns the whole file back in a single variable. 
uh, you might ask, why don't we always just use these? Why do we have this thing where we read one line at a time inside of um, inside of our with block? The reason is that it's pretty. Ex it can be pretty expensive to store all of these things in memory. We haven't talked about uh, what it means for something to be expensive. We will sometime next week. But you can think of it as you can only remember so many things at a single time or have so many variables in your head. The computer is the same way. It can remember a lot more uh, individual things, but it can run out of memory too. And so if you try to read all of the lines at once and it's a huge file, that might crash your program. Your program might run out of memory and it won't be able to run anymore. And so for large files, we prefer to process one line at a time. So get one line and then do something with it. Whereas for smaller files, um, we can get all the lines at once or read the whole file at once. In case you're curious, this becomes a problem for very large files. It's not a problem for even files the size of an entire book. You can read in all of the lines at once for a whole book, for the whole Harry Potter series even. But as soon as you get into like many millions of lines, your program might start running out of memory. So that's everything about reading. Uh, I'll have one slide here about writing. How do we write? Uh, we write within these the same kind of width block, except here, open, um, we give it a W for the write mode, which means that you can write to a file. And it also includes being able to create a file if it doesn't exist. And then we use our standard print function, but we give it this file equals f. Uh, so this, remember from our functions lecture, this something equals um, a variable or an expression. Uh, this means that this is a default, uh, a default parameter. And so the default for print is to print out to the terminal. But if you want to print out to a particular file, you can override this file default parameter and give it the file that you want to write to. And when this code gets executed, if you go and open up the file path slash file.txt, you'll see first line and second line on two separate lines. First line, second line. This is uh, very handy to do because the terminal isn't persistent at all. It gets cleared all the time. When you close the replet and come back, it's gone. If you're on your computer, when you close the window and open it again, the contents of your terminal are gone. And so writing to a file is the way to persistently hold on to something that your program produced. 